Hey everybody, and welcome back to game five here on the uh, Western Sports uh, Conference. Uh, this is the finals. This is the final game of the finals. For the game five, five game series. Game five, five game series. Get hype. <laughs> Get oh man, so so stoked, uh, dude! All right, so uh, um, we oh. have huh. UC Santa Barbara and University of Arizona. I'm sure you guys have all been uh, hanging around, so you know the teams. Fans, go flag, go! Huh, that's really weird. They they seem to have uh, banned out Aurelia on huh? the side of Santa Barbara this game. Weird. And Azir being banned again? Huh? What? Huh? I I, I, I don't there. really. I didn't really see too many, too many Come good, on, like, Aureli didn't Aureli seem to be too effective. I promise. Um, away. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, no. like, Like, this finally. Is okay, so, my question is now, how does the oh. University of Arizona respond? Because, like, alright, so, they've got Rise, Azir, and Aureli a pit, or a band out. From well, I mean, Anguish okay. one hasn't played poorly on any of the picks that he's played. No. Um, his I... Cho, his Cho Gath game was really good. Almost said Cho Gal there. Um, his Cho Gath game has been really good lately. Uh, like that first match was was fine. It's just like they didn't have quite enough damage to be able to get back to Cogma. Um, right. But um, Liquor Kool Aid looking like he's going to be locking in that Shin again. I mean, like, I liked the Shen the first time around. It was really, really good. He's played it well uh, every time he's he's used it. So it's still a solid pick. Um, I think the Caitlyn pick up for U of A means a lot. I really think that that means a lot. And if they're able to pick up some sort of uh, assassin to complement that, they could be looking at a pretty strong game. Well, they they did they did match it up with Sejuani as well. Um, like, who are you thinking? Who would be an assassin that you would expect on that team? Honestly, like, LeBlanc. 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 Mm-hmm. I could definitely see LeBlanc uh, fitting in pretty well because I mean, you can get really easy access to the back line. You don't even have to really put yourself in much danger. What about gangplank? Um, gangplank could work too. Honestly, like anybody that can put immediate damage onto the back line. Um, is, is going to be pretty good. I still think the LeBlanc would be better, but the Gangplank, I think, is a pretty good choice there. Um, if they can set it up right, they go, and Anguish one has shown that he's actually really good on Gangplank as well. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll see if that works out for him. Um, let's see, so that is uh, Oriana being picked up uh, from the side of UCSB. Like you were talking about last, last game, how that would be really good. Yeah, but now they don't have they don't have liquor Kool Aid actually playing Malphite. Like they aren't gonna have as Divey of the Cog. Well, I mean we'll find out. We'll see what happens. They are banning uh Cogmai out on the side of the University of Arizona. Don't want to deal with him again um, yeah. into the Oriana Shin comp that he had the time before. You did just bring this up, and I wanna I wanna. Okay, so the Oriana comp. I want to know what Sobati is bringing to the table. Because, like... Yeah, it really depends. Like, he needs to play an initiator, like, jungler, so that right. there's a reason to have Oriana's Zach is still on the table. Yeah, Zach is like, still on the I think he goes Zach again. I think, has he played Zach just about every game? Uh, no, he played it the first game, and I think the second game, and that was it. Um, mm. I could be wrong on that, but I know he played it definitely the first game. He just finished playing at game four, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, so he and, and Silvati, even in the past, has played a really great Zach. So, like, I think they've got a chance with it, you know. Um, as for the bands just now, Lulu being banned out from uh, Scatman. I'm, I'm not sure if there was significance in that, but... Uh, also, Meteor's uh, uh, Talia being banned out as well. Probably a good idea. I like this pick. I like this pick a lot. Um, pulling out the Tarek. Yeah. You, uh, you think that'll... Well, I mean, so Tarek ultimate, definitely a very strong ultimate. 
Um, oh, and Zoe? Maybe a Zoe? Oh, is it Zoe? No. It's no, Vlad, it's not. Though. Well, okay. <laughs> um, what? 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 I was. I was excited for that Zoe pick, but I think the Vladimir is going to be just as good. Um, and going back to the Tarek again, uh, this kind of okay. This kind of fills in some of the gaps that they had the first game, uh, where they didn't really have a, any sort of way to like survive those fights outside of just like taking the damage and building a ton of health. Okay, but- Silvati did go with a in-your-face Oriana alt me jungler. Oh, yeah. There you go. You throw the ball onto Jarvin. He's an ex- excellent ball carrier. Uh, he's just going to go ahead and, you know, cataclysm onto a Great target. ball handling skills on that J4. Oh, comes yeah. From no, a, I, comes from a great line of uh, ball handlers. Right. Exactly. <laughs> just, <laughs> they've been handling balls for centuries. Oh, um, and so he's just going to, I mean, drop the cataclysm onto a prime target and automatically you got yourself a, uh, a free shockwave. You know, like, it, it's a good setup, and I think it's going to – I think it might pan out for them. Um, well, not to mention, look at all the uh, the shields that you have going uh, onto the side of of that team. Jarvan has one of his own. Oriana can give you one. Um, and then after that one goes away, then you have Shin that, that stands unites behind you. Um, on the other that, hand, that you comes do have some – yeah. I, yeah you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like, there, there's a lot of – this is essentially protect the gin. Like they're trying to make sure that can't carry can do his job and actually carry. You oh, know? to protect um, the Kogma count without the Kogma. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh man, but I mean, like you, you've got J four for the initiation. You just you just gun it down from there. On the other hand, talking about U of A's comp, it's a little more protective. It's a little bit more. Um, and by that, I mean, like, it's more of a uh, um, siege comp. I mean, it's mostly because you've got the Caitlyn and you've got the gameplay, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So if they're in, like, a 5v5 situation underneath the tower, they could be throwing out barrels and cues left and right trying to take out, uh, just chunk down uh, the enemy team. With that being said, they're probably going to have to be looking a lot more uh, objective control than they've had in some other games. Like... I think that makes Dragon, especially, kind of important in this game. Hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think back to game one. Anytime that you're like, dragons are important. Because you would have thought, like, game one is the game that I would have thought where the dragon advantage would have been the most. Yeah. But they weren't the able to use that damage they had. I guess. That was like the big, like glaring issue was like they had sure they had all the damage, but they had Caitlyn that was really able to apply it, and that was kind of it. So like there wasn't a whole big way to like get it through, you know. Um, in this situation, I mean they've got Vladimir, who's a pretty big damage dealer. I mean they've got especially like in Gameplank and Caitlyn, um, they've got two people who are going to be able to consistently apply that damage if they happen to get. Um, Infernal Drakes. If you're looking at something like uh, uh, Mountain Drakes, Caitlyn's going to be able to, I mean, you build a rapid fire cannon and you can walk up and tap that turret and it's just going to start blow, uh, blowing over. You know, um, if they happen to get their hands on some Ocean Drakes, great. They can sit underneath tower and, uh, you know, d- defend themselves and, and be able to heal up pretty well. I mean, that all being said, uh, Obviously, like the objective that uh, UCSB is going for is kill them in a team fight and take their turrets. You know, I don't. If they're not able to do that, it's going to be difficult for them to find other ways into the game. Hmm. What What do you think we're running for? Uh, for masteries. Uh, Aside from right. Kleptomancy on Gangplank. Right. Uh, grasp on Shen. You're looking at. Um, Eef. maybe mm-hmm. electrocute on Jarvan if they're if Silvati is going more of an assassin Jarvan. Um, probably Airy on uh, Oriana. Uh, I mean, it's until we load up here, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but that's that's kind of my guess. Uh, 
something a little more reserved side of UCSB. Um, yeah, not bad. Man, you know, not bad. Uh, so yeah, I mean, got the electrocute on Jarvin, grasp on uh, Shen, Ari on Oriana, um, Ari on Morgana as well, actually. So that's interesting. Um, I like that more than going the uh, uh, meteor route. You have a lot of free ways to proc area with Morgana. It's just uh -huh. cool. Right. And then on top of that, you can also proc it on your own carry uh, with the Black Shield. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you would you get a little more use out of it. Um, you you proc carry on your own carry. <laughs> Airy carry. Um, okay, so. I know it's Jim not. Jim is relative. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, his aunt, I think. Um. Again, more aggression. No, it's, it's Mary Carey. Whatever. Is that really his? No, anyway. I'm just kidding. Darn it. Uh, all right, so <laughs> back at the game. Uh, we've got, uh, again, like more early ward spotting. Uh, like just trying to gather as much information as they can. Uh, UCSB is taking kind of these risks, uh, uh, traipsing into the jungle like that and trying to, you know, pin down exactly what U of A is doing. And that's an interesting tactic, like the fact that they're actually actively trying to find out more information about U of A. I, mm -hmm. I kind of I like that. I think that's no quarter. <laughs> Wait, is that what is that what he actually says? Yeah, when he parlays, one of his yeah. voice lines is no quarter. Huh, interesting. I don't know what that means, but it's great. Um, okay, so... Uh, A plus. A plus analyses. Mm -hmm, thank you. Uh, that's uh, Shen playing. That's... Uh, ah, good, good, good job. Good job. Got me I'm good. pretty good at that. I'm pretty good at those. Uh, Alright, so uh, looking across the board, though, uh, at starts on Gangplank, actually, um, the Anguished one starting with a... Uh, uh, starting with a mana crystal and the uh, refillable potions, that's kind of an interesting start there. Um, well, I mean, he got a mana potion from Klepto, and he's got a red potion from Klepto, so he's doing good. Uh-huh, yep, yeah, perfect. Good analysis there, too. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm thing. just saying, you know, the, hey, hey, I'm just saying, they don't have information on that <laughs> in the game. I, I have to look and find that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair point. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, right, Sejuani got, got the king. Yeah, they're trying to get in there. Um, I mean, they, take, they took similar paths. It looks like Meteors is still stepping a little bit forward without a whole lot of vision. Oh, but it looks oh. like Sejuani's looking for some action there. Won't end up getting a whole lot out of it, but... Uh, yeah, we'll end up uh, getting at least, you know, the pull temporarily out of Meteor, so that's going to be good for him. Um, it is a pretty cool, pretty big cooldown not to have um, when you want it. It's like 20 seconds or longer at, at first level. Right, I mean, and that alone is going to force Meteors to back uh, ahead of in burst, in Oh, so, Silvani finds oh. Scout Man. Burns yeah, his flash. flash the wall. And that's a pretty big cooldown too, because uh, now, uh, now Scatman is losing a lot of initiate power. Um, so you know, if he does have the uh, stun, uh, getting ready, he's not going to be able to just kind of pop that at will. He's going to have to really make sure that he's in position for it. Um, it's probably important to note that. Uh, both junglers have now cleared their bot side, so it's going to be a little more difficult for them to uh, come down there and actually execute a gank and make it worth it if they end up not uh, being able to find anything. So that oh, part you, is fairly interesting. You're basically trying to say it's the time where where the junglers no longer have any interest in bot lane. Right, exactly. Like, despite, despite bot lane crying in, for help and over and over again. Yeah, well, there's no camps down there, so why would they go? We, we've um, all been there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how much of a how much of a priority bot lane is for um, specifically U of A. Like, I think it's a bigger priority for uh, UCSB, but 
I don't think that U of A has as much interest in making its bot lane really scale super well. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly just because they've got they've got a lot of carries across the board. So if one plan fails, they've got a couple other plans that they can go with. Um, so we'll have to see. When uh, missing that Q on accident. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just get sticky fingers. I get it. It happens. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Uh, yeah, honestly, this game, I feel, is going to be a lot of farming and being careful. I mean, it's the last game of the finals match. Like, these teams have worked so hard all season to try to pull this off. And so, like, being able to, uh, like, knowing that this game kind of decides the season is probably pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Like, Definitely. this is such a shift from uh, game three, especially for UCSB? Yeah, like, you have to... I don't know, like, I don't know if you feel like your confidence is backpedaling or not, but... I mean, they just lost two games in a row to a team that they feel like they probably beat pretty easily in the second game. Um, so, I mean, like, that cockiness just doesn't feel like it's there anymore, which I think actually may lost. help help them in the end. Lost to Aurelia and Zach, really. Yeah, I mean, like, and that was that was brutal. And so, oh, but it looks like uh, God's the King is looking for a little bit of action. Won't actually end up finding anything there for his team, but uh, he's gonna go ahead and back off to his own jungle. So, uh, meanwhile, though, no wards are left. Spot out, Silvati. Uh, Silvati's looking for this sneaky red buff. Uh, we'll end up being able to get out. So not too bad, but uh, definitely trying to uh, try for those uh, those invades. Still no first blood seven minutes into the game. Definitely like you were saying earlier, both teams trying to be very, very, very patient. Yeah, um, it's almost uncharacteristic, but like, I mean, both teams did pick these sort of like late scaling comps. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I think, most surprised that we haven't seen uh, more proactivity out of the junglers. Like, a lot of attempts, but no real, like... Commitment? Right, exactly. Um, I don't know if they're just biting their time. Oh, 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 oh there we go. Burn. <laughs> First blood going over to uh, yeah the ang uh, the anguished one. Uh, what were you asking? Oh no 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 no! I was I was wondering what his second uh, what his second keystone set was with Kleptomancy. Because oh, I, gotcha. I I mean it was but I think it was just the passive from Grog so like, mm -hmm. like uh, um, yeah, yeah, burned him down all the way. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what it was. Um, still, I mean like. Honestly, it seems like there's a class difference uh, between uh, the Anguished One and Liquor Kool-Aid. Um, there just was no way for Liquor Kool-Aid to really get out of that. If he had backed just a little bit sooner, I think he probably would have been okay, but um, he got a little greedy. Oh, God, the King being, thrown, uh, being spotted out, but it won't matter. Glacial Prison going on a Dog Impersonator. A lot of damage being tossed out here, though. Uh, the teleport in from the top lane will end up being cancelled uh, from the anguish one. Ooh, God, the king. Barley trying landing the Q. Brilliant. Absolutely up. brilliant. And it looks like they're looking for the dragon. Mm -hmm. They're going to end up going for that. Um, yikes. That was a really well organized gank, actually, from, uh, uh, from UCSB. And see, like this, a lot of this game I feel is going to come down to how much information do you have on the enemy team. Because like, there was not really any, um, there weren't any uh, good, solid, protective wards that were laid from um, U of A before going into that game. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Barley trying with the double buffs in that bottom lane right now. 
Get get that auto. Get your auto in. Oh, come on. Smack him. Come on, get that free burn. Ugh. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean like Exactly. Uh I mean that's really important to actually remember because like you can get a lot more done if you're if you're throwing in those autos when you're when you're walking up to um, when you're walking up to enemies, especially as a uh, as a support, right? Um, and even like a caster support, you, you you do have a lot of control there. Oh, it looks like Silvati's gonna end up finding a uh, God the King here. Dog impersonator coming around from the side, gonna land the shockwave. God the King ends up falling to Dog impersonator. Grabs that kill for a U of A. Uh, looks like Meteors now just trying to do as best he can and not push up too far. Um, man, I uh, I thought that was going to go a little bit differently, but um, honestly, I think God the King just not being careful enough after he saw Silvati. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's what I'm being right now, by the way. Is a, uh, is a support caster. <laughs> no, you're not a support. You're a main. You're. No. No. You're my Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. I appreciate it. Um. I don't know. Like, if he would have backed off, I feel like he, instead of going in for uh, Sovati and expecting his mid laner to follow up, he probably should have just backed up and conceded the uh, gank pressure over to Sovati. Hmm. Well, not what happened. Um, and he got shockwaved in response um, to his death. To so death, that's, right? Yeah, to to his death. Yeah. To death. To death. <laughs> shockwaved to death. A um, few red pings went, coming out on went the. Went to top. a dumpster. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Also, I will be fairly interested. The, uh, the build that Can't Carry decides to go with. Um, if he opts for a more traditional Jin build, or if he's going to go with the uh, uh, Rage Blade Jin. Um, it's been kind of making its rounds. The, the Rage Blade Jin, people are like, that's uh, that's not supposed to work like that. No, yeah. that's wrong. And then they were like, no, no, actually, it's cool. Yeah, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, cause it, it makes sense. I mean, you stack, you're stacking the uh, attack speed with every auto attack, and so therefore it's gonna translate into more damage. Like, uh, speaking of damage, God the King actually doing a decent amount of damage, um, with the few items that he's got. Okay, so is that what? Then that's the way that it works with Rage Blade on Jin. Is it just you go up to four and you just murder them with the fourth bullet? Pretty much, yeah. Um, you're, you're, and I mean, even then, like, you won't lose all of your stacks once you uh, expend that last, um, that last auto attack. Cause he has that reload time. Um, I think you only drop like one or two stacks or something like that in the amount of time that, that takes. And so uh, you can still keep yourself pretty healthy. You don't even necessarily have to be at that four stack to do maximum damage. Right. It's just the fourth bullet hurts a lot right now because of Oh it. yeah. Exactly. Um so top oh, tower. tower and... Yeah. Exactly. Anguished one. Oh, didn't even need to flash, I don't think, and now Dog Impersonator in a bad place. Um, as like the Kool-Aid also maybe in a bad place, but not really. I'm a liar. Yeah, using that don't hit me zone to uh... Putting, putting Anguished one into a bad place. <laughs> Sending him to Davy Jones' luck. Oh uh, no. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, right. it came out. Alright, cool. Um... Riley B. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. That should be a more of a Nautilus voice, don't you think? I, do, I mean, like, but I'm 5'6 and, like, right. 105 pounds sopping wet and full of venom. It's Let's cool, be real here. Right. I mean, I'm only, like, 5'7, so I get it. I can't, uh, I can't make the Nautilus voice where it can feel, it feel <laughs> real. 
Uh, I've been spending a lot of time practicing that one, honestly. Uh, that, as well as the uh, uh, Ramus, uh, okay. That's those are really the only things I've tried. Um, all right, okay. so. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, so if we take a look at items right now, um, top lane is looking fairly even. Uh, well, actually, no, not at all, because this is a pickaxe uh, completed and a triforce completed uh, for uh, uh, the anguish one. Meanwhile, uh, we've got. Not even a full item completed on the top side for uh, Liquor Kool Aid. Like, Liquor Kool Aid is kind of sort of getting outmatched these last couple of games. Mm -hmm. um, and without having a whole lot of jungle pressuring, like in the first in the first few games, he, was, he had a decent amount of jungle pressure that was coming. Oh uh, no. On the bot side, the ultimate will end up coming out of Scatman, uh, saving himself for a little while, but it looks like Dog Ambassador will be the first one, oh yeah, uh, to go down. So Vadi looking pretty unhealthy though, as he runs backwards, the Hemo play goes down to the three members. Uh, now, looks like, uh, oh, Liquor Cooley will escape over the wall with his life, but God the King and uh, the Anguished One looking for a little more action. Now it's just three members of U of A left on the bot side against Can't Carry and Bardley Trying, who both have full health. A beautiful route. Uh, coming on to Scat, man. Man, that was uh, that was a really, really powerful ult from Scat Man there. Uh, yeah. But, let's see if the bait's enough on catching Bardley. Oh, Bardley boy. Trying. There's a flash out of can't carry. Bardley trying, taking a little bit more damage than I'm sure he's comfortable he, with, but he gets out of life. Did he do that too quick, or did somebody feather their auto in to blow the barrel up? Uh, I think somebody actually threw, the, uh, uh, threw an auto in to blow the barrel up. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes that even more impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice seeing that sort of uh, level of play, honestly, sometimes. Um, just because like people are really really paying attention to what is possible and not possible um so i, I don't know I, I like seeing things like that it's nice mm. uh i like seeing all those minions fall oh yeah this is really yeah. pretty mm -hmm. it's just poof they're gone it's like a magic act uh all right well uh barley trying gonna walk out of that the lane swap coming through as well um his top lane turret's been already taken Mid lane tur turret does end up falling. It's for, not the uh, first turret though. No. <laughs> Just so everyone knows. <laughs> we all know how important that is. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, it's a pretty good. Oh, oh it God, it's coming over there. Down, though. Of course, it's the flash out. So, body looking to murder the anguish one. Yeah. Can't get it going. Yeah. Yikes. Um, and I think that's what they really should be. Honestly, I, I think in order to stay in the game, to really like continue um, stay in a powerhouse in this game, what uh, UCSB really needs to focus on is um, trying to get Zelvati into fights and getting those really big damage items they need on him. Uh, I'm not sure how effective he's going to be as a tank in this game if they can't keep uh, dog impersonator alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just, that was, that was a kind of the issue last time, too. D dog impersonator's final score was 0-7. Mm -hmm. Uh, and essentially... He has a tough uh, time when he's, being, when he's being focused, and there's really nobody around. Um, there's just some issues with the game that that sort of thing happens. But uh, curtain call coming out uh, for UCSB. Can't carry a little oh. The body will end up initiating on to eight, uh, 80 C million. Oh, but we are cool trying to finish him off. All right, the uh, anguished one will end up picking up a kill for himself. But that is, uh, oh, that is now two for two uh, in this team fight. Dead even, Bardley trying though, not looking like he's gonna make it out of this one alive. Anguish one chasing him down, 
uh, flashes that mastery backwards. Uh, but now, God the King and Scatman trying oh. to get out, but not enough time to be able to pop the uh, heel onto his jungler. As like Kool Aid looking to do more. Yeah, I mean, Anguish one. Not looking great here. He's gonna have to try to get out somehow. Scatman coming in to at least give him the uh, shield. Oh, someone's making the call to go in though. There's yeah. a teleport coming in from Meteors. Uh, there, uh, we busted the flash forward. We busted the uh, uh, Hextech Proto Belt. And that's going to be an attempted turret, but there we go. Silvati finding a good target onto the Anguished One. We'll end up picking that up. That is actually going on to Can't Carry. Now Liquor Kool-Aid trying to engage in the remaining members. Meteors trying to get out, uses the pool to get down. Uh, Silvati, oh, that brilliant da uh, dodge from Meteors. But can he get out of this? Uh, nope, Can't Carry yeah, sealing yeah. the deal with the final bullet. Uh, yeah, not... Quite uh, now for that slippery movement to get himself out. DC Nguyen now being chased down by uh, Bardley trying. Uh, the Looks like Bardley trying to land. This. And the stun coming oh. out. Oh. Follow up, I can't carry, but that's it. Curtain call already down. Mm hmm. Um, Bardley trying is being extremely aggressive on this Morgana, and it's a little refreshing, honestly. I mean, like, was not afraid to run directly at uh, AC Nguyen. So, interesting. All right, so, looking at what we've got right now, it looks like uh, just purely based off of kills, um, well, kills in a few towers, uh, UCSB has uh, managed to get themselves a little bit back into this game, um, actually taking a, a bit of a lead as well. Um, if we look down at the items that have been completed right now, uh, we should have a split pushing Shen, uh, trying to match Anguished One. The truth is, it's hard to out CS a gameplay. Yeah, I mean, barrel barrel farming makes makes gameplay's job a whole lot easier. Oh, taunt landing on him really quick. Oh, and here comes Doug Impersonator. Uh, running him from the mid lane. There goes the ultimate uh, to try to save to himself. No, but nope. Nope, uh, that's taunt, dead shockwave. Oh, the root landing. That was, that was a really good uh, predict by far the trying. Absolutely. Um, uh, trying to throw his off out of the way. Yikes, so Vadi, uh getting that Stand United thrown onto him, and Nguyen, or ADC Nguyen, trying to uh, kite back as much as he can. Scrap, Scatman trying to uh, save himself. We'll end up doing just that, but the flash from ADC Nguyen will get him out. Uh, not able to finish off the kill on De Silvati, though. Uh, that will be a dead Scatman for uh, really nothing there for University of Arizona. It does look like Santa Barbara is positioning to do this Baron. They took top tower to shove it a little further as well. As uh, Anguish One is teleporting back in for Arizona. God, the king might look for a steal here, but he's, he's gonna die for it. Dead. There's no, yeah. there's no steal. Um, oh, but ADC win, able to pick up kill onto the uh, support. Uh, oh. Now that we find himself being initiated on, Meteors trying to kill, uh, pick up something here though. Uh, will end up being put through, uh, yeah, put through the ringer as Can't Carry lays down the damage onto him. That is a kill for Can't Carry as he uh, takes out the mid laner from Arizona. And uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge loss for University of Arizona right now. Important to point out, in the past five minutes, uh, UCSB has managed to give themselves a very healthy 5,000 gold lead. Yeah, 5,000 gold lead. Um, maybe their crux was really just Aurelia. Sadly, it kind of feels like that. Um, oh, there, there is the... That, uh, was, that was a good... 
just kind of smashing together the CCs, but can't carry. Does get engaged on, only a little yeah. bit. Oh, God, the last one's got the king chase as well. Uh, Alright, the damage coming down onto. Yikes, the support from Arizona Meteor is now jumping in the middle of the fight. Team of Blake gets four members. Uh, pull splashes out for nothing. Uh, ends up actually in a death for uh, God the King. The Anguish now, one now trying to kite backwards. ADC Nguyen is extremely low and still just trying to fend off as best he can. Uh, the onslaught of damage is coming through from uh, UCSB. Bardley trying uh, the um, spell shield ticking down a little bit. Meteor's just not able to really do as much damage as he's hoping to right now, though. That lead just slowly squeezing itself a little larger and larger as these fights mm -hmm. happen. And see, uh, again, going back to when we were talking about win conditions, uh, before this match started, when we were talking about how exactly these comps are going to be played and what uh, UCSB would need to do to win, this was it. I mean, they needed to be able to uh, take uh, take 5v5 fights, kill important members, and then take turrets Earth afterwards. That's really it. Um, ah, things are looking rough for U of A, but I don't know. What's your, what's your take on their win condition and how they're doing so far? Uh, I mean, this one, Gangplank's not small. Like, Gangplank's one of the ways that you need them to work out, right? Um, the other, the other time they had a really good fight was when, um, Scatman did land a good ultimate on him and win when they tried to all in them. Um, but, it's, it's just what they need, is they just need a couple more fights to go their way. Yeah, I mean, if they can if they can pull that off, they can land the proper CC from God the King. If they can get uh, the initiation and follow up from uh, Scatman, they should be all right. But here is the curtain call. We're gonna end up finding two shots on two meteors who will have to pull himself out, but does not have that available. Meanwhile, the anguish one trying to do what he can to take this bot side turret, but um, he just lost one member to uh, just lost one member to UCSB. So, Maybe two years, depending on how God the King does in getting away from this red buff shin. Yeah, I mean, Liquor Kool Aid is doing a lot of work with uh, work with the Shen right now. Ooh, the, what's uh, his build buff. right now? He's got Titanic and Sunfire Cage. So, mm. and then on top of that, he's building a uh, Thorn Mail. So, oh, there goes the uh, there goes the custom gradient Scatman basically wasted yeah i mean like so body knew that if he pressured enough the scatman would be forced to pop that but in the end it wasn't really needed so Just as uh, soon as he popped it he was like nah psych nah that's good <laughs> nah it's fine you, we, we got this it's all right um yeah i mean meteor is doing what he can damage damage to the damage. Tower. it's massive right now i mean new um, engine Right, and that's even without the uh, the uh, red buff. Uh, or that's with the red buff changes that uh, don't actually burn towers anymore. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, <laughs> that's that's heavy. Um, if we look at the items that are completed right now as well on uh, some of the key members, Max has got a Shirelius Revelry, uh, Revelry being uh, uh, used on. Uh, Meteors, so that's that's a fairly interesting build path. A little bit more, um, uh, like it's a little bit more of a uh, a supportive item. So kind of interesting. I was wondering why his damage seems so low compared to uh, compared to uh, the Oriana uh, uh, dog impersonator. Mm -hmm. Well, but still, kind of having like that secondary support role and allowing allowing another form of engage and to allow Scatman just to be tanky mm -hmm. instead. And it's not like you see, Shirelius gives AP and then it gives HP, so that's double HP for Vladimir. Like, so or I mean, double AP for Vladimir, I should say. Um, right. 
So I don't know, like, I guess it's not an awful item that would me. Um, but you, you I do... I you sense it. I, like I said, it, it makes, it makes a lot, I can see it making sense in a competitive environment. Right. And, and plus, like I said, with items, with items, um, that have HP on it, like, they're all, they're all AP items for Vladimir at that point. Right. Uh, alright, well, there goes the, uh, Cosmic Radiance trying to protect the, uh, jungler. Looks like God the King going in anyway, me, uh, trying to use that blood pool to get out, but that is two oh. deaths for U of A. Three deaths as, uh, the barrage of bullets comes out of the curtain call from Can't Carry. Uh, Flash? Hello? Not sure if that was VM or just, uh... Not on purpose. Bartley trying now. Uh, gonna go ahead and try to throw a snare on ADC Nguyen. Um, that is a dead inhibitor turret and a dead inhibitor for UCSB. Uh, they'll be continuing this uh, rampage through. It looks like they might just be aiming to end it all here. Oh, the yeah, they want this cool. over with. That is yeah. a dead ADC, a dead top laner. Uh, Scatman putting himself in some danger, but it's not gonna matter. That is the end of the period. UCSB taking the title this year. Uh, congratulations to our WEC finalists. Uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, you guys had a very, very hard fought uh, last game and first two games, so congratulations to you.